Earth. Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team. So today we are the 26th of July and we have your servitor Damien Duportal, we have Stéphane Merle, Hervé Lemeur, Bruno Verharten and Mark Waite. Let's get started with the announcement. Weekly 2.361 has been successfully released, at least the WAR and the Docker image. We are we have built our custom image, so it should be available in Infra CI and Weekly CI in the upcoming hour. Uh, so I assume the usual uh, release check need to be done in the upcoming hours as well. So it will be considered finished only in a few hours after the checklist was done by the person in charge of the release. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, so so the, the weekly release, you're right, Docker image is done. Um, I haven't checked that the job completed successfully, but other things look just fine. Nice. Um, second announcement, uh, just a reminder that for the Northern Hemisphere, this is summer, which means a lot of people are going in holidays. I uh, will be off uh, starting tomorrow included for eight, uh, eight days. Next week, uh, Hervé is going for two weeks in holidays. And I assume that Stefan, you are going in holidays in three weeks which mean during the month of August, some of us are going to be there or not there, depends on the weeks. Uh, Mark, I assume you might have some holidays as well. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, I'm at a conference Friday, Saturday, Sunday of this week. So yes, lots of, lots of busy coming and going. So Hervé, Stefan and I have added our unavailability in the Jenkins Infra Team calendar. That's a private calendar shared by the team where we are of the events such as renewing credential and people off. Uh, we could choose another location, but for this month, you have the information for members of the team. And for anyone else, that means we will have limited availability. Our bandwidth will be decreased because we won't be full team available. So we'll try our best to fulfill requests, but expect some delays. Hello, Daniel. Hello. Um, do you have the link to the notes if you want to follow up? I'll take some. Are you asking me? Um, I'm adding back the, in the chat. Uh, if you want to get the interactive notes, everyone should be able to use it. Uh, it requires only GitHub authorization. I'm not sure if it works for you, but you can at least read the notes. Yep, you're sharing your screen anyway, so it's good. Thank you. Um, Jenkins LTS release candidates scheduled tomorrow. That's the next announcement, uh, Mark. Correct. So uh, Alex Brandis has volunteered to be release off, release lead for the that release. Uh, Kevin Martins is assembling the change log. Uh, LTS backports relatively few, and Alex has confirmed that the Windows installer change that would that intentionally forbids Java 8 will not be used for Jenkins 2.346.3. It is currently being used for weekly, so that's a good sign. Okay, I've added it in that part. Next week, we should have the a weekly, is that correct? Correct. So that one will be for Stefan, just because of the calendar, because our boss Hervé and I won't be there. Nothing expected as usual. That should work, at least the 10 past work without any issue. If there are any issues as usual, you have to read the logs or ask Mark for and team for help. Right. I will. Next Tuesday. Um, Oh, oh, and one is LTS, LTS baseline selection is due tomorrow as well for the next release. So LTS baseline selection for next baseline. 
okay. is scheduled for tomorrow. That doesn't okay. affect the infra team, but um, be aware. Okay. Regarding the LTS release candidate, is there any active participation of the infra team that is required? Uh, no, not as I far as I know. So. Okay. Um, which means tomorrow, try to avoid merging things on Kubernetes and puppets. So the controller won't restart and people will be able to do the LTS release candidates. Sounds good for everyone? Good. Good. Okay. Anything else before we proceed to the operational concerns? None from me. One, two, three. Okay, let's go. Uh, just a cover of the task that we were able to completely finish during this iteration. Uh, so there has been the installation of the GitHub command ops. I understand that's a work for, by Tim and Hervé at least. Um, it appeared that there have been some rush on installing that, as I understood. So it has been disabled except for at least one or two repository, test repositories on the Jenkins CI organization. Is my understanding correct? That's my understanding as well. And when I tried to use it on Jenkins.io, it did not seem to work any longer. So no. I think I've confirmed it's disabled. It's enabled on core and Jenkins Safra test plugin okay. for the Jenkins CI organization. Okay, is it available on Jenkins Infra repos organization? Yes. Okay, uh, that one is also scaring me. Could so your mission, Hervé, will be to assess which repository on that organization it has been installed to because we have to check. Uh, I can because... disable it on Jenkins Safra and it, enable it. Uh, it's not about it. enabling or disabling, is what problem do we want to solve for which repository? And then security assessment, because for instance, yeah. I don't want anyone to use it for Puppet, but I can understand it's needed for Jenkins IO. So we need an exhaustive list of the repository where it should be installed. So yes, maybe can we disable it on Jenkins and Fra, then assess where is it needed because I no problem that it can be needed on some use case, but we need an exhaustive list of where is it needed. This interesting interesting case for on Jenkins and Fra was to be able to to ask for reviewer in any repository, as not so many people have right to do so. I'm not sure to see what problem does it solve for the context of the Jenkins Infra repositories. For repository permission updater, I think uh, Tim spoke about uh, this case. Uh, okay. I, I'll disable it and we'll, we'll uh, gather all the um, all case, all use case. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think that's really an, a really useful tool. It's just that for some repositories, it's useful and for some it's dangerous. And since we have both part of the equation, we need just to list where it will be useful without any risk. That's the only thing I ask, but I don't mind having it on the, on the system. I'm not speaking for Jenkins CI organization. I'm not admin of this one and it's not the area of the infra team. But yes, thanks for that because it can it can create new way for us to manage and improve our management. The chat ops is will really be useful. Um, I'm taking the issue in the order of the notes. There has been a, someone that wasn't able to connect to repo.g, so it was due to an invalid email on accounts Jenkins.io. So thanks everyone for solving that. Not a lot to say about this one. We have synthetic monitoring on artifactory login. Thanks, Hervé. So that was a long running topic that Olivier started months, even years ago. Uh, so we, we are now checking the full process of 
uh, monitoring with Datadog if we can log in on Artifactory using a technical account on the LDAP. So when there are issues, we can immediately identify if the issue is because of Artifactory itself being unavailable, or if it's an issue with the LDAP. So Artifactory is fine, but when you try to contact the LDAP to do the login, then there is an issue. So thanks for that work. Don't know if there are any questions. Something to note. Next one then. Disable all anti-spam protection on cert.ci. So with the work that uh, Hervé did recently on the Puppet templating to allow cert.ci to have some exception to, to uh, diverge from the CI Jenkins IO usual config, uh, that has the advantage of closing that old issue that was requested by the security team. Thank I you. think there are one or two more that we could be able to treat with the recent Puppet fixes. You're welcome, Daniel. If there are some that are still annoying you, don't hesitate to ping us on this one. I think um, between the set of plugins and this particular um, Apache rule stuff, I think those were the big ones. Thank you for cleaning those up. No problem. We have grown on the Puppet area a lot during the past week, so we are clearly more efficient to treat such elements. So if there are some that are dormant, we could totally do it now. We have the now knowledge, expertise, and we should have bandwidth after the holidays. Meta ticket to remove Jenkins Wiki exporter. Thanks also uh, Hervé and Gavin on that area and everyone. So we were able to disable, remove, delete that uh, old service from the cluster. It's now managed by a set of reports on the static plugins websites. Uh, Gavin did a lot of the heavy work there, and they're very finished and clean up everything. Any question there? Nope. And finally, Datadog doesn't detect when the account app is down, so it has been fixed by Hervé as well. I assume it's related to the synthetic monitoring as well. I don't remember exactly that one. I was. Uh, yes, it's uh, the same as uh, the Artifactory. As Artifactory, this test is now trying to log in uh, the account uh, as well. .io and uh, same for Artifactory with a new technical user, data tag monitoring. Which has cool. Right, but, uh... Thanks a lot. Do you have any question on these tasks or can we proceed to the currently working work in progress tasks? Okay. Um, I'm taking following the notes. Permission issue on plugin release with CD workflow. So Adrien Le Charpentier has raised an issue. He's not able to use the CD process to release his plugin. I'm not really sure where the where is the issues lies. Uh, sounds like the user and password are okay, but he's denied to push the, the new plugin. Uh, I've checked and mentioned on the issue that uh, uh, Trusted CI uh, didn't have an issue. The RPU is working as expected. Uh, Adrien is part of the maintainer, so I'm not really sure how to diagnose further because I don't personally don't have admin rights on Artifactory, so I'm not sure or any of this work. I've mentioned team and uh, um, and people from the security team as well. Um, we need help because we don't know the CD process really in details and we don't have the tools on Artifactory. So for what it's worth, Artifactory is acting up today. Um, okay. While we were trying, so um, this is something I first discovered like two security advisories ago or something. I can create a new private staging repo for security fixes in Artifactory. And for several hours afterwards, Artifactory isn't quite sure whether that repository exists or not. Um, which is a problem, especially if stuff is already staged and we expect it to remain staged and then the artifactory claims it has no knowledge of anything related to the staged content. 
So this might just be general artifactory shenanigans that aren't even on our side. So I just looked and um, the RPU regular job, which is running every three hours, I believe, is running. And the tokens that we attach to GitHub repositories for use by the CD GitHub action are valid for, I believe, five hours. So unless the CD process takes several hours, which the failed one did not, there should be valid credentials. So I have no idea what's going on here. But uh, as I said, we we also experience other problems with Artifactory that are fairly difficult to pin down. OK. Thanks for confirming and giving us details. Um, what do you think if we just keep waiting one or two days before being checking again, or at least waiting the five hours for the new token to be to be uh, released? I mean, uh, there, there is a new token. The issue was filed five hours ago, and there's a token on the repo that's two hours old. OK, should we ask Adrien to retry now with the new token? Does that make sense? Um, yes, or we, or we, can, we can just do it ourselves. So ideally, Adrien is uh, reaching out to me when he's doing that. The problem we have in Artifactory is that I think we have logs for two minutes or something. They have insanely aggressive log rotation. And so if you tell me 20 minutes after the fact that something went wrong, I know nothing about it. Okay. So um, sh should we let Adrien synchronize with you then in order to access the logs? Because I... Yep, that, pr that probably makes sense, yeah. I think you are one of the only person with access to these logs, so that's why. Otherwise, we could volunteer to help, but yeah. Uh, there, is, there are Vadek, KK, Tyler, and Olivier. So yeah, it's basically me and maybe Vadek. Would that make Do you think that could make sense if I request to success uh, once I'm back from holidays with the yeah, role of Infrafusion in mind? Definitely. You only need to remember one thing never delete an artifact ever. <laughs> yeah, I, I will go for uh, during the briefing uh, once I will request uh, because, yeah, uh, that's a good point. I need to be briefed on what to do and not to do. But the reason I'm asking is to be able to only monitor or observe the logs or see if we have metrics about the request or size or see what tools do we have without having to ask Chief Rock for that. OK, so let's tell uh, Adrien to, to see with you. Let me check with Daniel. Many thanks, Daniel. Next issue is CI Jenkins IO permission for contributor. So that has been opened by Joseph Peterson. Um, I've redirected him to the mailing list because that will involve giving him some kind of privilege uh, permissions on CI Jenkins IO. Given Joseph is helping the infra team, that will make sense from a pure infrastructure point of view. That's why I said as infra officer, I don't see any issue on that. However, that could have some side effect that I haven't talked about. That's why I would prefer moving that to the mailing list. So we have board members, contrib core contributors, and people with the knowledge to confirm on or infirm. Especially there could be solution to solve this problem for the build rebuild without requiring this permission, but none that I'm aware of. The so... use case isn't quite clear to me because um, the infra library should be such that the, all pipelines would be trivial, no? I mean, the, in, if he, in, even in, if he's in, updating the Jenkins file, how much can possibly go wrong there? He can't do anything if he can change the Jenkins file, isn't it? Uh, well, it's running in the sandbox. So 
it's not yeah, like it's on CI, yeah. yeah. Um, right, but the point is um usually the Jenkins files are maintained by the plugin maintainers, and for Jenkins file changes to be effective, the one who pushes the commits uh, needs to be a needs to have write access on the repository, right? That's the security model. Yeah. Like if you open the pull request, you need to be a committer to the repository for your changes to be effective. Otherwise, uh, we ignore your changes to the pipeline. And then it trusts that. Uh, that, yeah, that's a setting on the repository. Yeah, this right users with admin or write permission. This one exactly. Um, right. So the use case isn't clear to me. So even if he wants to propose pull requests that get pipeline changes, I guess he wants a passing PR build with changes where the pipeline gets adjusted at the same time as project settings, but he wouldn't even get that really if he just plays replay. So it's not clear what the use case is. And is if he's a contributor to a specific component like the bomb, then he can just commit uh, his changes to an origin branch rather than yeah. a branch on the, of a fork, for example. So the use case is not clear to me here. For, for, for me, I understand it's that you want to test the Jenkins file pull request changes. And in that case, either you are admin rights on the repository, but if you are admin of the Jenkins controller, you can trigger builds that will be, you will be seen as trusted. That's the only exception of the trust model there. Uh, no, he's specifically asking for the rebuild permission. Uh... Of, of pipelines. He doesn't even need admin permissions. And so he can still file the pull request. It's just that the pull request would ignore the Jenkins file changes and use the Jenkins file of the main branch. But once a maintainer merges the changes to the Jenkins file, uh, then the CI build of the default branch would pick up those changes. So, so he wants kind of wants fake CI builds that are manually modified, mm -hmm. but what, and, and how is that useful is my question. Because the, the, the thing is that you could break uh, the, the builds for if the, the approver read the Jenkins file, but don't understand fully the consequence of the change and merge it because the green will be built with the Jenkins file with the old version and not the new one of the pull request. Once merge, it could break everything and you will need to do subsequent pull requests, meaning the, the right. loop, right. So the loop that, that's, be... that's That's what I meant at the, bit, at the beginning. I would expect the pipeline library to be easy enough to use that you don't really need CI for changes to the pipeline because there shouldn't be any options that are required that need ci other than perhaps can does this I, plugin even build on windows or not i or, strongly disagree on that assertion it's not it's a code it's groovy so that means that it's not possible to have it easily working for me it's, it's not possible at all the pull request uh, triggering this issue is uh, on the variant plugin where the Jenkins version was in the Jenkins file. And it's uh, the part of the Jenkins file he wanted to, to replace, to change. For the bomb? So, variant plugin. So I felt him by uh, replaying his build with uh, the Jenkins file change in it directly. Okay. I feel like that we don't have an answer right now that should be discussed on the mailing list. Not that I don't want to have that discussion right now. That's really instructive. But yeah, it's not clear the real needs there. I agree with Daniel. But I don't see an easy solution. For me, it's it's the, the, a block a blocker point of the trust model. The trust model is required and we need it. But we don't have an easy solution for that. I'm not sure. 
and I agree with Daniel. I'm like, not sure if there is really a, if the need is really yeah, that important. I, I don't know. But yeah, let's discuss it in the mailing list. Or... So what Mobile I list. assume it's that one. I try to change the Jenkins file. Let me find the. So you wanted to test that change. Okay, L let's discuss it because it's not clear. Uh, even if that, he's a maintainer of at least one Jenkins plugin, which means he can push whichever branches of the subject plugin to his repo at any other branch ref and then just do his changes and validate them there. He doesn't need commit access to the specific plugin repo to test changes to the pipeline. I'm not sure I, I understood. So, so Git as a distributed version control system, you can push branches of one repo to another repo. Yes. Right? Yep. So he's the maintainer of at least one Jenkins plugin. Let's call it the Jetterson plugin. Oh, oh that's tricky. <laughs> so, so he can push the master branch of variant plugin to the not master branch of Jetterson plugin and see what happens to, to the CI build there. And since it's he's a nice committer touch. to that repository, it works. <laughs> this the this is why that will, the only thing that will not work, hopefully, I really hope it will not work, is the incremental deployment because that would be really bad. Because we should, I think we have a check there that this doesn't happen because it's kind of a fake incremental but other than that he should get his ci result is this something that we could write down on the developer guides and at least on the issue do you know it's it's absolutely insane but it... uh Chatterson is not you know just some random contributor he's working on fairly central components and it could be a workaround to make his stuff work do, do you mind uh, communicating that to him either on that? I think the issue should be okay if we close it afterwards, or do you feel keeping that private? Uh, I can sure. I can write something up and maybe I misunderstood the use case anyway. So that's also another possibility. Cool. But that's also good to know, Frank, for sharing that tricks with us could be useful for us from time to time. <laughs> I, I object. <laughs> <laughs> I object if we ever use that. I think I'm delighted that a security person joined us and shared something that is really a novel technique. Copying repository A into repository B sounds like a, a horrible thing to do to that Git repository, but yes, it is allowed. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm I mean, thoroughly impressed. That's a brilliant technique. Uh, for me, it's also an indicator that if Jenkins pipeline would be portable, then we wouldn't have that issue because anyone will be able to spin up quickly a Jenkins instance, run it to test the change and then move it. That's not the reality of Jenkins pipelines because you need so much plugins and configuration and stuff that it's not, uh, not possible. So let's see that as a hack, but an indicator that we need to improve the, the software. Thanks, Daniel. Are there any question points on this one? Sorry, okay, let's just this one. Uh, that was the sorry, the issue opened by Jetson. Nope, nope, let's move on. Uh, next topic: uh, want containerized Java 17 Windows agents. Um, I've added that to the release. So Hervé is currently working on um, using Packer to not only build the virtual machine template for the agent used on CI Jenkins IO and other controller. But now we want to start using the same image and same content also for container. So whether you are running on a Kubernetes agent or a virtual machine on EC2, you would have the same tools with the same version on the same location with the same behavior. So that one, uh, being able to provide GDK 17 Windows agent is part of that area. The reason is because on the virtual machine, we already have the free 
GDK installed and maintained for virtual machines. So instead of having to deal with the whole doc, Jenkins CI Docker Windows agent, is it core or nano server or whatever, or 2019, or that's a nightmare. So let's focus on the infra only. So we have our own dependency and with the that work, we should be able to have one location to, to change the free version and then it work for Windows and Linux the same way. So since it's that part of the topic, I've mentioned the, that work with a link on the issue, and I've put it because it's work in progress. I won't put that on the two next iteration because they will be gone and oh, Linux will be a good great step. But we have to keep that in mind because Basil and other contributors need Windows GDK 17. So that should be really important for us to finish before end of August. So they would have the infrastructure to continue their work. Is that clear? Or do you have any other question? Put on hold. Um, next one is access to NPM namespace. So uh, Hervé took over that one. If you don't have time, I will take over. Uh, Gavin will want to publish NPM package. Sounds like we need to contact uh, Tom Fenley, at least for one of the NPM namespaces for Jenkins. I have no idea of all of this work, but we need to take over at least one because uh, none of them are managed by us as far as I understand. And I assume that Gavin checked with the board. Uh, there has been someone who is using Jenkins, the string Jenkins namespace reference on Gavin issue. I'm not sure if it's, do you think Mark, we could contact NPM and say, hey, hello, we are the Jenkins infra and we can prove, prove it by, I don't know, a DNS record or whatever, but prove that we are Jenkins and we will want to take this one because there is nothing published on the data account. No objections from me. I, I'm just uh, asking question because I don't know oh, any of this work. Um, so, okay. Is it okay, Hervé, if you synchronize with Gavin on that area? And I will, and Stefan and I will take over next week if you didn't have any answer. But the goal will be to contact NPM repo for, for checking this. I don't think uh, there should be any issue with Tom. We just have to get his current email, but by LinkedIn or Twitter, that should be easy. If we don't already have it on the mailing list. Jenkins is squatted. Jenkins CD, I have no idea, but honestly, I don't care. <laughs> and Jenkins IO, we could claim it as well. Sounds good? Don't, don't forget to write uh, run books once we have access to that. I have to follow up. Um, next one, infra CI logs are mentioning expired Datadog API key. So the goal is to have the private controller to send metrics, to collect metrics to Datadog, which is a private system by default. Uh, Hervé saw that we the plugin could be either configured to directly send metrics to Datadog, which could slow down Jenkins instances. So instead, you configure the controller and the Datadog plugin for Jenkins to send metrics to the local Datadog agent in Kubernetes, which then will take the performance burden and send the metrics. So sounds like the configuration went well, but you mentioned earlier today, Hervé, that you saw word behavior on the private dashboard with the metrics from that cluster. So I assume that some diagnosis work need to be done on that one. Is that correct? Okay, so it's only for infra CI. Uh, we haven't fixed that behavior on the other controllers. Uh, there will be the next, but let's fix this one. The subtlety here is that InfraCI is running on another Kubernetes cluster than release CI, which means we had to first install Datadog. So we have to control that Datadog is working for the whole cluster before being able to be sure that it's an issue with controller or below. So whip uh, to be diagnosed. The goal for us is to have metrics for InfraCI before being able to move release CI on that private cluster and with the same menu. Next issue, 
unless there is a question about that dog metric for infra CI. Uh, the Puppet upgrade campaign to latest 6.x. So I've covered, uh, I'm ready to update to the latest version, the Puppet Master. Agents are all fine. We are able to test it with Vagrant. We have removed most of the security alert on the GitHub public repo. Everything should be fine. I, they haven't seen any blocker. So now I'm holding on that one. I will finish it after my issue, my holidays. But that should be only a few minor version jumps. It's just that Puppet is a mess. The version doesn't map at all. It's clearly worse than the Jenkins Docker images in terms of version scheme. And that's not a compliment to ourselves from me. Uh, but everything is far. Uh, many thanks, Stefan and Hervé, for helping me on all these areas on testing that. We are improving our puppet knowledge there. Just a note, I've opened an issue which is not there, which is upgrading puppets to 7. whatever. The upgrade to puppet 7 is a blocker for us before being able to upgrade the virtual machine to Ubuntu 22 because Puppet 6 is not supported. Same thing for using Puppet on PPC or CPU-Z or whatever exotic CPU. Puppet 6 has a weird behavior. It's okay for Intel and IRM, but it's weird for the rest. We, we need to move to uh, Puppet 7. Any question on this one? On hold for only days, um, download slash latest directory out of date. I'm so happy to have you there, Daniel, because I, I will need help in the upcoming weeks on this one. Um, the latest uh, directory is a sim link on most of the original virtual machine on updates, uh, CI Gen uh, on updates Jenkins IO, the machine with the packages on the update center. Uh, there is a uh, for both plugins and core updates, there is a part of the script that say, oh, if it's the latest, then update the sim link to the latest directory. And so Apache serve the content of the sim link, which is fine. However, for the mirrors, there is a process that runs every hours on the PKG virtual machine uh, that takes quite the amount of resources. And that process goal is to synchronize the latest changes in plugin cores and any binaries to the get Jenkins IO mirror service. So then get Jenkins IO has that Azure bucket file where all the files are put. It check it, it get the signature, and then it's able to um, determine which mirror is providing that file. And the process of synchronizing uses something named blobxfr, which is a common line by Azure. To, it's a kind of air sync, but for the Azure file storage. And it sounds like that we cannot upload sim links. I'm not sure if it's the version of BlobXFR or if it's missing support on the Azure file storage or maybe both. But the behavior is the following. If you don't have the latest directory on the remote Azure file bucket and you have a sim link on your source, when it synchronizes it the first time, it dereferences the link and upload a copy so you have a folder, which is a copy of the latest when you read the link. So during the next synchronization, if you have updated the plugin with the new latest up to date, it doesn't consider it as an update on the remote system and doesn't update it, which means the latest directory is always out of date after the first release. So, I'm not sure if anyone has the knowledge or if we should try uh, that require updating the synchronization script, which is quite the amount of work because we need to add a, a step that will cover all the latest sim links and ensure and resolve them and force upload them. Right now, the synchronization says don't overwrite something that you already sent. Oh, we delete the them first. On the on the absolutely absolutely that's a good idea. It's just that scenario that I don't know enough. So I'm a bit scared to do that. I'm not sure if it was talked by Olivier or you, Daniel, in the past, or if you didn't know. I haven't been involved in the blob X for mm -hmm. yeah. I'm I'm hesitant to change that. I'd rather accept that this latest directory is out of date. Than, than risk deletion. 
so but Damien, if it's okay, let's take it up later. I think dropping mm -hmm. it from this this the work the planned yep. work is fine with me because it's just not that crucial an issue. I agree on this one. So especially um so what we did a while back is I remember the download page on Jenkins IO used to refer to the latest link. The problem with that is that the page as rendered explicitly stated what the last version was. And so if the site hadn't been regenerated, but the latest link was updated to a new release that just came out, there was a discrepancy between what Jenkins IO slash download said and what you were actually downloading. So what we did was the URL this links to is now a specific version, as you can see on the bottom there. And this was especially important once we added the SHA checksum because otherwise people <laughs> in that case wouldn't just get a newer version than they were expecting, but the checksum also obviously wouldn't match. So I'm not sure whether we in the project still have a use case for the latest URL. And so perhaps access logs and referrer URLs could be used to identify whether we still link there. Uh, if we do identify whether this is actually important to have, and if we don't, we just drop them. People, ex if it exists, it should work. So the options are make it work or make it not exist. Absolutely. I've tried an experimental process. It's um, with only checking the latest and uploading with override only the latest directories, but it takes some time. So it's additional times before having everything in sync. That's why uh, I really love the idea of, do we really need the latest? The only point here is that I'm not sure how we could ask the mirrors to remove the directory because not all mirrors are doing destructive synchronization. They could with their sync, but not all of them are doing. So we might need one garbage collecting task contacting all of these mirror, mirrors administrator to say, can you remove the latest directories one time? So fun fact, we've never cleaned up anything. There is some ancient crap on the mirrors. <laughs> and we haven't cared in many years and i wouldn't start now if people access the mirrors directly they've already taken the wrong turn somewhere yeah fair, fair. That, that's absolutely a fair point and we could absolutely blacklist the latest link from get jenkins io once it doesn't it stop having the directory latest for each then it should not serve to mirrors which means what you just said, people are really wrong if they are using a direct link to a, a specific mirror. Cool. So let's hold on on this one for uh, some time. Thanks for the details. Next one, enable development integration in Jira, postponing to September. Uh, that's too much. I don't have access to the Jenkins CI, so that means back and forth with people with these permissions that require OAuth token, that is a wall permission issue. We doesn't support GitHub app. So I propose that we do it once we have uh, everyone on board. I'm a bit worried by this one. Maybe it could be just Jenkins CI, but that require clearly more discussion. The request is clearly legit and will help a lot the developers and contributor. James clearly stated that and that that makes sense. But right now I don't see any proactive action that we could do because that require administration right on both Jira and Jenkins CI GitHub organization unless I missed something. So you assume that Tim and Daniel have these rights, maybe Mark. I don't have, I only have on Jira for me, myself. So if it's okay for everyone, uh, I will add a message uh, on the issue, say we postpone to September because that's too much work that is hard to understand and anticipate. Might be easy, might be not, but I don't want to put so much variation on our work in the middle of August. Right. Uh, another point here is mm -hmm. we have like one and a half years left or something with Jira. 
what's the what's the EOL? Yeah, that's that's a so Daniel, I think you're you're assuming exp, assuming knowledge from others that they may not have. That is that Jira has announced the end of hosted Jira instances. That everything Jira does will be cloud, and <laughs> and so we see that the the end of Linux Foundation's hosting of our Jira instance unless Jira revises their their stance. Did I state it correctly, Daniel? Right. Um, and I don't think Atlassian will change their opinion. They're working on making uh, cloud Jira work with more user accounts, which is the major problem. There was a short, quick discussion on the dev list recently where this came up again. And I think uh, Atlassian are up to 50,000 users they support with plans to go up to 100,000 or so. And I think we have 130,000 users in our user directory. Of course, the vast majority of those are unused or haven't been used in forever. So with some cleanup, we might be able to migrate there. Of course, assuming that Atlassian sponsors this because otherwise <laughs> <laughs> it will be a little expensive. Um, so, but with, with the EOL announced, I think for early 2024, I would be hesitant to spend a lot of time on Jira. changes to our hosted uh, Jira, especially if those changes would potentially make it more difficult to migrate off afterwards because we've adapted workflows and such. So um, if this is easy to do, sure. If this requires work from us, maybe not. Right. Yeah, knowing knowing that Jira is is destined for end of life and and we can see it, right? You, the, we should not invest much in our Jira, any heavy weight in our Jira instance. Okay, thanks for the precision. I, I, I took the back of saying, okay, they should keep still hosted. So yeah, they are definitely going full cloud. Oh crap, that's not a fun one. Okay, so no action for us right now. That will be a wider discussion, a community wider discussion then, I assume. Thanks. Next issue is the CPUZ the agent mark. I assume you didn't add much time on this yeah, one. I have not I'm, done anything okay. on it. I'm still using it from my test instance, but I haven't put it back on CI yet. Okay. Before removing from the milestone, can I ask you to share using the encrypted uh, subs directory the credential to access it with a technical uh, user that can sudo? Uh, the goal, as I said two weeks ago, is for us to be able to try compiling the Ruby gem for puppets. So we can see if we can have a running puppet agent from that machine, which oh. will solve a lot of issues because we already have puppet managing a few agents. So that will automatically install everything needed. Uh, let me see if I can work with someone and find a way to share those credentials. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I think we're already written, so we, or, otherwise I need. Um, the big one, migrating updates, Jenkins IO, so the update center on another cloud for bandwidth reasons, because that costs a lot. So right now we are working on the, the Puppet configuration. Stefan did the heavy loads. Um, we have reached a point where we are able to deploy, configure Apache and prepare everything. The next step for Stefan before going in holidays will be to update the, all the script that we use for the releases uh, for uh, generating the update JSON. So it's uploaded also to the new virtual machine, not only to the current one. And then we'll put on hold for the holidays to continue that end of August because that's a sensitive topic but that's almost 4K per month of bandwidth that will go to a few hundreds. So that's clearly something we have to work on. Um, yeah, the status is that. Did I forget something, Stefan? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no. So that one is still on the next milestone and then with Stefan holidays that will move on the, on the backlog. Is there any question on this one? Nope. 
No. Um, new important elements. I got some. So there has been a topic started earlier today, I think, or yesterday, about cleanup proposal of communication channels. Um, before I have, so there might be advices, but we are, I want to restrict the discussion only on the Jenkins Infra IRC channel. So only the channel that we use to discuss, I'm not mentioning the one with notification connected to the bot, only the one we use there. Um, the, uh, the proposal is to consolidate to use either discourse or Gitter. Uh, are there any opinion? Strong yes, strong no. Uh, considering that uh, all the problems that it could have on our communication channel or the improvements. What are your thoughts, folks? Subjectively, both discourse and GitHub have a higher barrier to posting stupid questions that end up being worthwhile to ask than some thing that's actually a chat like interface. Maybe that's just me, but. I probably wouldn't open a new topic just to ask a dumbass question uh, or what I sus suspect might be a dumbass question in either of those and so or raise an issue on GitHub. Um, so that's why I would prefer there to remain an actual chat, but that's that would be my feedback here. You don't consider Matrix Gitter as a chat in this sense, if I understand oh, correctly? Uh, yeah, so sorry, I, I understood GitHub as in GitHub issues, ah. not Gitter. Ah. Okay, yeah, then no problem there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the, the goal is, so I, I got mixed feelings, but yeah, I think uh, I agree with Daniel on this one, that we need two communication channel. Uh, right now, we have that real-time communication through chat on IRC. Uh, for me, that will be a huge improvement moving from IRC to Matrix Gitter. Uh, because I've counted during the past eight years, exactly 182 person that I've met that refused to ask a question to the Jenkins infrastructure project because they didn't know how to make that ERC thing works. There's no history, they didn't know whatever. And I pers it personally took me three years. So I know I'm lazy. I'm not the best expert, but honestly, IRC has been a pain during the last decades. And the arguments about the freedom of using and being able to take over, uh, that was a really important and foundational argument. But since the takeover by uh, Freenode last year or two years ago, all the mess that made us to move to Libera Chat for supporting the room, now I don't really see, unless we host it ourselves, I don't really see a solution. So for me, Gitter is the, let's say it's commercial, it's running on someone else machine. So we are still at risk of someone being able to take over. That's a risk that still exists, but at least it's really easy to use. It provides multiple, the, the barrier before being able to post the message is close to zero. You have seven ways to authenticate to Gitter on one click. So I don't mind switching from IRC to Gitter if it helps bringing currency. Uh, but I agree with Daniel, I don't see the point of having a discourse thread channel room, I don't know the wording on, I don't see the point right now because of what Daniel said, but there might be use cases, I don't know. Maybe eventually for announcement. Maybe if we are able to automate status Jenkins IO, maybe posting automatically the, the feedbacks of these meetings, any issue or outage, that could be something. Yeah, you just proposing to switch from IRC to Peter is for these two first, well, this first. Uh, Only this one, uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, but uh, that was a discussion opening about could we have new use case? Could, could we benefit from also using discourse or not? 
is it worth the investment or the time to spend on that? Is there any feedback on the infra meeting uh, post in this course? I didn't see any, so give, I don't give know. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Or Bruno giving us a hearth. <laughs> Thanks, Bruno. So yeah, I think you stated the question. So first, first point: Is it okay for switching to 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 switching from IRC to Gitter? Is there any opinion for not doing yes, it? Yes, it's okay. Okay, so that's the. Let's communicate that back. As I told them, I will discuss that and give yeah, a feedback. We can also ask it in the IRC channel too. Yep. Good because point. Maybe some people didn't on IRC didn't show this uh, discourse thread. Um, something they didn't put on the cleanup proposal. It's the mailing list for Jenkins Infra, the public one. What Tayo talked about that, is it still something we should keep or not? For me, not. I don't I don't get any use. I think most of the time is spent deleting spam from it. So I'm thinking about uh, I'm taking um talking about the Jenkins dash infra Google groups. Right, right. I was just going to check to see what the latest spam volume is on it. Ah, somebody else must be processing it. I'm used to processing others. So I, I don't find the mailing list especially helpful for me, but it's low volume. So, what are you talking, Daniel, Hervé, Stefan? I don't see the harm in keeping it, but uh, same for getting rid of it. So, I I feel more like getting rid of it and not having too much way of uh, of uh, disturbance and, and multiple time the same question. So I'm more like using something that is more in the in the use case of people. More people use it, better it is. If they are used to a tool, we have to use that tool. Okay, what are your thoughts, Daniel, on that one? Sorry, what did you say? No problem. What are your thoughts about the Jenkins dash infra at Google Groups mailing list, the public one? Is it something that solves a problem? Should we keep it, replace it by something else? Just delete, remove it, stop using it? No opinion. Uh, I don't think I use it enough to really have an opinion about it. Okay. <laughs> I I have exactly the same feeling as Daniel, and I'm the Jenkins in elected infra officer. So given yeah, I, I just today, wanted to say right. I I get to not use it a lot, but you don't. I, I don't, and uh, sometimes I feel bad because I I am under the impression of some people would use it. So it's like at least the active user that the six of us are are there. So is it okay if we also ask that question in the mailing list? Should we keep the mailing list and see feedbacks from people? And if we don't Watch. hear for strong feedback, we can yep. just stop using it and archive it, which means we keep the private one and communication will be either on Gitter uh, for real-time communication and eventually we could think about this course whatever room if it's if it solve a problem otherwise none it asynchronous communication already happened on the help desk github issue so and here sounds good for everyone uh, i agree um New topics, uh, I don't know. There are a, a set of new topics. If it's okay for everyone, I won't raise them given that you already have enough work there. The only one to have an eye on is the JDK updates for 11 and 17. Um, that might or might not happen in the happening days. It already happened and it's already available on the virtual machine agent templates. It has been automatically picked which means Windows, Linux, on Intel, and IRM. 
it's not available on the CI Jenkins IO tools because the uh, automatic update script not only check for these four platforms, but also for exotic power PC and CPU Z. Um, if it's okay for everyone, we'll try to split the update process between these two exotics platform and the others. They would have a, they could eventually have a minor different version GDK, but they are not connected to the controller and not use, not used. The priority will be to provide the latest GDK version as soon as possible for the usual builds. Well, that sounds good for everyone there. And so in that area, I saw the issue you opened, Mark, that's the last element. Um, we need to start working and updated this on the Jenkins official images, either controller and agents. On the agents, because we used, we depend on this element for our weekly builds for the core. So that's the reason why we use an older version because we point to an older remoting version. That has been accelerated by uh, what Hervé uh, checked yesterday, discovered yesterday, with the change from semantic versioning to the new whatever long version pattern that we use for plugins. The remoting component is also following this one. And our update process with update CLA is configured to monitor for semantic versions. So it's not able to pick new version from now. So we need to move it to use latest version. That should allow us to update the Jenkins CI infra packaging. So the target is to be sure that we have an updated GDK 11 for the weekly next week, Stefan, since you will be only there. We need to be sure. So we will try to mention you on these updates. So you have just to check. Team can be your backup and Mark as well on that area. The reason to rush it for the Jenkins official controller images is because GDK 11 backports, as in its changelog, a backport of the C group version 2 support. Because today, if you run the official Jenkins image on a Ubuntu 22 machine or on any Docker desktop machine, which are using C group version 2 to limit the resource of containers, you could specify any memory limits. Java will simply ignore you and look at the hosts directly limits, which means we are back five years ago when Java wasn't able to keep up with the container systems. And you can put whatever memory your Jenkins controller will be OM killed. We don't have enough real production setup on the wild with the C group V2 right now, but we start seeing people complaining and personally, I will want to avoid system administrator having to deal with that kind of problem, which will be, oh, that version of Java embedded on the Jenkins image is not able to read Segoop version two stuff. So I we should urge to update that to avoid that kind of su word support issues from end users. At least we are aware that could happen. The infra Jenkins infrastructure is not concerned by that problem though, because all our machines are still running on Ubuntu 18, which is still LTS supported and use C group version one. So our current GDK 11 is okay. If you are using GDK 17, it's supported since, since months. So you don't have to, to warn on that. That was the only last point for awareness. Any question or things unclear on that topic? No, low risk, low, low threat. Yep. High value. Okay, are there other topics you want to bring that we could have forgotten or you want to mention? No, just a warm welcome and thank you to everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to work with all of you and I'm really, really happy of the interaction and all the things I'm learned, I'm continuously learning. So now I'm gonna go to holidays and I hope you will have a nice end of week, nice end of weekend and see you in one week or two weeks, depending on who is speaking. I'm now stopping the recording, see ya.